guess what I learned about in class today? Oh, what? A type of biotechnology called gene therapy. Oh, what? I don't get it. <laughs> gene therapy is a method for treating or curing diseases by changing a person's DNA. Gene therapies can function in a variety of ways, including by bringing new or altered genes into the body to treat disorders, replacing a disease-causing gene with a healthy copy of the gene, or inactivating a disease-causing gene. Products utilizing gene therapy are being investigated for the treatment of diseases like cancer, genetic disorders, and infectious diseases. Human gene therapy, in essence, aims to change or influence a gene's expression or the biological characteristics of a living cell for therapeutic purposes. Gene therapy works because it is nipping the problem in the bud by dealing with it directly at the source. Genes code for the functions of our entire bodies. When problems in the DNA are present, it can impair the body's critical operations, causing disease, slowed development, and genetic disorders. As previously said, gene therapy can inactivate, replace, or add genes to the body, depending on the mutations in the problematic DNA. Thus, it can be done a number of ways. The gene can be inactivated through the use of a molecule that identifies and breaks down the messenger RNA. It blocks the mRNA specific message, which prevents the coded protein from being created. Gene editing uses restriction enzymes to cut a DNA strand where the problem area is. This is another way to inactivate the section. From there, a new section of DNA can be copied and pasted into the cell. In this case, a vector is injected directly into the patient. A vector is a genetically engineered vehicle that adds genes into the cell. Viruses are a common choice because of their natural ability to deliver genetic material into cells once, of course, its ability to infect the patient has been eliminated. Vectors can be used to modify cells both inside the body, in vivo, and outside the body, ex vivo. Lentiviral vectors are used in ex vivo gene therapy. They allow the special genes to be permanently joined with the original genetic material. Adeno-associated viral vectors, AAV vectors, are used in in vivo gene therapy. They deliver genetic material to the nucleus of cells, but it remains independent. In the 1960s, researchers discovered the first concrete evidence that proved it was possible to add new genetic functions to mammalian cells. In 1961, Lorraine Krauss was successful in genetically modifying the hemoglobin of a sickle cell patient. Gene therapy was officially administered to people for the first time in 1970. It was given to two very young sisters from West Germany who had hyperarginemia. In the 1970s, scientists discovered how to clone particular disease genes, and gene therapy continued to be tested for the rest of the millennia. By the year 2000, gene therapy had been tried out in nearly 3,000 patients in almost 400 trials. The first gene therapy was approved in Europe nine years later. A second gene therapy was approved for ADA skid children in 2016. The first gene therapy in the U.S. was authorized by Novartis a year later. Gene therapy's evolution and discovery have made a huge splash in many ways. In the field of science and medicine, it is revolutionary. It has been proven to help with health problems that stem from genetic mutations. Before this kind of biotechnology, this would not have been possible. It has transformed the scientific world, and experts in politics, economics, medicine, and more have made many predictions about where gene therapy will lead us in the future. Some could perhaps argue that as it has been explored, it has given us more questions than answers. In a survey published in January 2001, 88% of the interviewed people had hope for genetic research to cure serious diseases. In another poll, 90% of those interviewed agreed that the scientific research was a national priority, and 54% said that public expenditure spent on biotechnology research should increase. Yet despite initially seeming like a linear path to solutions for all genetic problems, it has raised many questions about the ethics surrounding it. For example, which traits are considered normal and which are considered a disability or a disorder? Might gene therapy's high cost make it available only for the wealthy? Could the widespread use of gene therapy make society less accepting of people who are different? And is it ethical and responsible to use gene therapy's abilities to enhance basic human traits like intelligence? The large controversy over gene therapy has caused the scientific study to bleed into a widely debated political and social topic. Even with much controversy, gene therapy is headed in a very positive direction. A study by the National Bureau of Economic Research estimates that 1.09 million patients will be treated by gene therapy from January 2020 to December 2034, and only increase our spending amounts by 15.7%. 
In addition, the potentials of what gene therapy can do are seemingly endless. It has the potential to treat vast amount of diseases such as cystic fibrosis, cancer, heart disease, hemophilia, diabetes, and AIDS. Eventually, gene therapy will be much more common, but it still has a long way to go before it becomes an integral part of 21st century medicine. Thank you.